A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Aye, good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It has been a while since the last video, but I've been working my wood really, really hard in the last time. Literally working my wood. I mean, I'm, I'm doing woodworking. <laughs> but I wanted to include a pun in this video too. By the way, speaking of my wood, <laughs> If you plan on purchasing something from STEMAGU for someone for Christmas, then definitely make sure to purchase it up until the end of November. Otherwise, I can guarantee that it's going to arrive on your place on time because I have to uh, handmade all those items like the headphone stands. So definitely make sure to purchase something up until the end of November if you plan on doing so. Link to STEMAGU in the description. Now we're going to dive into the main video. So, this is one of the last videos regarding the visibility rules here on this channel. And we are going to talk about one of the most important ones, namely the visibility rule for all the powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, and so on. Infinitely many divisibility rules in one with this easy trick that math professors hate. Also, a tiny little bit of um, extra footage for the end bonus footage. We are going to derive the divisibility rule for the number 3 and the number 9. And now we are going to dive right in. Let us choose a random arbitrary number uh, 1234. Okay, just the first four um, integers concatenated. Now what we are going to do, positive integers obviously, we are going to decompose it into um, three different ways. At first what we are going to do is we are going to recognize that 1234 is the same as 200, uh, 123 times 10, which is going to give us 1230 plus the last digit, 4. That's a true statement. Okay, we can decompose it in a different way using powers of 10. What we can do is we can say that the original number is going to be um, 12 times 100, giving us 1200. What's missing is 34, the last two digits concatenated, plus 34. Or we can go one step further and say our original number is the same as 1 times 1000 uh, 1, plus 234, which are the last four di uh, three digits concatenated. Now, we are going to notice what the prime factorization of the number 10 is. And this pattern can be, um, can be continued for bigger numbers too. If you have something in the 10,000th place, then you can decompose it up until something times 10,000 plus all the last digits which are still there concatenated. Now, what is the prime factorization of 10? The prime factorization of 10 is going to be 2 times 5. Also, if you take a look at 10, this is 10 to the first power. 100, what, uh, 10 to the second power. 1000, 10 to the third power. Let us rewrite this a tiny little bit more. So, this is 123 times 10 to the first power plus 4. Or, in other words, this is 12 times 10 squared plus 34. Or, in other words, this is 1 times 10 to the third power plus 234. Now, as mentioned before, 10 is the same as 2 times 5 as its prime factorization, giving us in the process 123 times 2 times 5 to the first power plus 4. Or in other words, 12 times 2 times 5 squared plus 34. Or the last one is going to be 1 times, uh, my terms looks a bit like a plus, I'm terribly sorry, 1 times um, 2 times 5 to the third power plus 234. Obviously, we can distribute our power that we got right here into each and every part, meaning this is the same as 1 times 2 to the third power times 5 to the third power and so on with the squared and also with the first power here. Now, what can we say about the divisibility of this number 1234 now on each and every iteration. Now, obviously, our last digit is going to be a number which is divisible by 2. It's going to be 4. Now, the most important part is how our last digits concatenated are going to behave. A number is going to be divisible by 2 if the last digit is going to be divisible by 2. This follows from the fact that this first part obviously is going to be divisible by 2 because it includes a factor of 2 to the first power. Now, all that we need for divisibility by 2 is that the last digit, which we extracted from here, is divisible by 2, 2. 
And what about the visibility by number four? I want you guys to notice that two squared is the same as four, meaning this first part is also going to be divisible by four, meaning our original number is only divisible by four two if the last two digits concatenated are divisible by four, which is nice. Okay, so we, we can tell something about those last two digits. If they are divisible by 4, then our original number is 2. 34, no, it's not divisible by 4, meaning our original number isn't either. Now the game continues. What about 2 to the third power? This is going to give us 8, meaning this first part is obviously divisible by 8. Now, our original number is only divisible by 8, if the last three digits concatenated is also divisible by 8. It gets a bit more complicated here, figuring out if this is divisible by 8, but no it's not. Because 240 is divisible by 8, 232 is divisible by 8, but not 234. Meaning, since the last three digits concatenated are not divisible by 3, our original number isn't either. And now you can probably see how the pattern is going to continue. With the last digit divisible by 2, then the original number is. Less 2 digits, 2 squared, divisible by 4, then the original number is 2. The last 3 digits, 2 to the third power, divisible by 8, the original number is 2. The last 4 digits, 2 to the fourth power, divisible by 16, original number will be 2. And so on, the pattern continues. And that's it, that's the divisibility rule for the number 2 to the nth power, you could say, for n being a natural power. And yeah, this concludes the first part. And now let's take a look at two other very important divisibility rules that you probably heard about um, when you attended school, if you attended school. <laughs> Namely, the divisibility rule for the number 3. Let us suppose we have a certain number, 135. This number is going to be equal to n. Now we can Turn this into something abstract in a second. This is the basic um, pro procedure that you go through if you want to decompose something and find out the, the divisibility rule. Now what we are going to do is we are going to recognize that 13 is by the same means as up here. Uh, 135 by the same means as up here is 13 times 10 plus 5. So this right here is 13 times 10 plus 5. Meaning we can decompose each and every number n into something of the form 10a plus and the last digit in our case, which is going to be b, b movie. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to try to extract a factor of 10 from our b in some kind of way. Meaning the only way to get this in the natural numbers is to add something to this side of the equation and subtract it right again, which really wouldn't change anything on our equation in, in general, on our term on the right hand side, because adding zero doesn't change anything. Now what we can do is to get a factor of 10, we can add 9b to this whole thing, so plus 9b and subtract it right again, because 9b plus b is going to give us 10b, meaning each and every number n can be written of, uh, in the form 10a plus 10b minus 9b. Now the very cool thing about this procedure is that 9b is definitely divisible by 3 already, and it's also divisible by the number 9. Now, in order for our original number to, de to be divisible by either 3 or 9, we need this first part to be divisible by 3 or 9 too. Now what we can do is we can make our divisibility rule a tiny little bit easier by factoring out the factor of 10. 10 times a plus b minus 9b is going to be each and every number n in some kind of way. Now what is the divisibility rule? Cool thing is what many people don't know is that the divisibility rule for number 3 is the same as the divisibility rule for number 9. Because if a number is divisible by 9, then it's obviously also divisible by 3, because 9 is 3 times 3. Meaning, if you use the divisibility rule for the 3, you are basically using the divisibility rule for the number 9 already. Kind of. Now, <clears throat> our divisibility rule for these two numbers is, a number is divisible by 9, let's start with this one first, if a plus b, where b is our last digit, is also divisible by the number 9. And a number n is divisible by, by 3 if and only if a plus b is going to, divisible, going to, be, div going to be divisible by 3, 2. That was a mouthful. Now, let us check with the number 135. If we take 135, okay, a 
our first two digits, 13. Plus B is our last digit, 5, which is going to give us 18. I mean, we can go a step further here. We can already see that it's divisible by, by 9, but you can iterate this process. Namely, 1 plus the last digit 8 is going to give us 9. This number is divisible by 9 since our algorithm tells us that at the end we are going to get something which is divisible by 9. This something is the so-called iterated digit sum. What we are going to do is we are just going to add our digits basically together and once you get over 10 you are going to start from 0 once again. So yeah, this is our iterated digit sum and since our iterated digit sum is divisible by 9 our original number is 2. Also, since it's divisible by 9, it's also going to be divisible by 3 in the process. And this works for each and every number. And you can try it out for yourself and see if the number um, 4269 is going to be divisible by 3 or 9 too. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today with me having a bit of a speech disability for some odd freaking reason. But well, it happens from time to time when you stand in front of the camera and have a very dry mouth. And if you want to learn more about divisibility rules, analyt not analytic number theory, this time it's only elementary number theory, but you can broadly turn this into analytical problems too, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor free and we're kind of to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Oh boy, I'm never going to get tired of deriving divisibility rules. I don't know, it's just so satisfying to arrive at a solution this quickly and this elegantly. And that's a lot of fun and you should try it out for yourself too. If you like the things that we did today, be it calculations or turning problems like 135 into something more abstract, then maybe the number theory courses over on Prien's website are going to be the thing for you. Starting from the natural numbers, they go over to the integers and even more complicated fields like the integers modulo 2, for example. Or maybe also the Gaussian integers, which play a big role in factorizations and the complex plane. And this also leads to abstract algebra, which Brilliant is also going to teach you over on their website. If you didn't know already, Brilliant is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM. It starts from algebra that I talked about just now, going over to analytic number theory, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, whatever you want to learn, they definitely got something over on the website, even search engines and philosophy. And it's seriously a great place to learn something new. I for myself also learned a lot of new things from Brilliant, especially in the linear algebra branch when it came to um, bivectors and also Markov change. This is a bit of higher mathematics, but it was very useful when I started out doing functional analysis and the like at my university. And maybe you can find something that fits your needs too over in Brilliant. Maybe you're going to prepare for some kind of upcoming exam, or maybe you just want to give someone a premium subscription for Brilliant this year to make them learn something new every day. No matter what it is you want to do with Brilliant, you can definitely get access to a big portion of Brilliant already for free by using the link at the top of the description. But more importantly, the first 100 people to make use of my link, brilliant.org slash are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have available on their website already. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you did enjoy this video, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel too. Check out Flemish Wood, my woodworking channel, and don't forget to um, also check out stemage.eu if you want to um, gift someone something from stemage.eu for this Christmas. Um, and up until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day, and I'm going to drink something because my mouth just feels pretty weird today. I think I I bite my tongue this this night. I, I have no idea. Feeling kind of weird. But never mind. I'm feeling good overall and I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao.